Hey, it's Jim, and it's been a long time since we've done a Plenty update, so I want to do a quick devlog to just show some new features that we've been working on. Now, it's been a while, but that doesn't mean that we haven't been actively working on it. We've actually been doing so much work on it that we've been heads down and haven't had a chance to actually make videos like this. So um, I'm not going to call all the new features and bug fixes, but I just want to go through a few things to just highlight some of the major changes. So I made a little quick list over here. Um, See if I can demonstrate some of this stuff. It's going to be kind of an interesting order because some of these things depend on other things. Uh, but essentially, last time we talked about doing schema.json files. And in our schema.json file, we had a couple of different types of uh, widgets that we could use in our CMS. So we could do things like have checkboxes and radio buttons. Um, there is a UUID field that's been added. There's been a time field that's been added. Let me maybe show off a little bit of what those might look like. So I have a test site over here. So this is our Causework site. So we have a service arm of our business where we make web properties for nonprofits. And uh, our website is built on Plenty. And um, in here, we can probably demonstrate some of these features. So let me take a look at maybe the About page. So this is a page that is of the, pay, uh, the content type Pages. So if I were to come over here, you can see that we have our content types. We have Audits, Blogs, Guides, Pages. And then in here, we have our defaults. So defaults are empty right now. We're not using it. Well, that's actually one thing I should call out. So this was previously called blueprint.json. Blueprint.json is no more. So this will break your site if you have a blueprint.json file, most likely. So you should get rid of those. Uh, we might add a bug fix to just handle these just in case they're left behind, but um, you might get weird errors right now. So if you have an old blueprint.json file, get rid of it or just change it to defaults.json with an empty object notation like this. That's totally fine. But we also have this concept of the schema.json. So underscore schema.json. Um, and we can do schema.json files like this, and you can put curly brackets in here. Actually, you have to do that and save. And if you do that, um, you're able to start defining field structure here. So let me look over here at this website. This is all completely component-based. So you notice here that each one of these little individual components um, is self-contained. So for instance, we could grab like the stats that's just by the, the numbers section. We can move it above the intro or we can move it below. We could get rid of these and we can edit these individually. So our schema.json file actually doesn't allow us to edit these things directly. That only allows us to edit top level fields. So if we had like a title field on this page directly, but if it's inside of a component, then you actually have to start using a component architecture, which previously didn't exist, but now we have something like that. So if you want to do something like that, the way you do it actually is you come in here and you define all your components globally. So in your top level content folder, you create a new folder. Oh, and I got to go. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. So this is um, where we left off as we were creating a components folder inside of our content. And that is how we create these content driven components. And the idea here is that through the CMS, the only thing you edit is content. The only thing that you change in the CMS is uh, JSON content. Now, if you're doing any structure or HTML changes, you do that, you know, through the back end as a developer. So but you, we, we still allow you to do a content-driven component, so you can change content to, to change structure, but you have to set it up specifically to do that. Anyways, the main concept here is making a components folder. So we'll create a new folder here. And all the specially named files and folders in Plenty start with an underscore. So since this has a special name, it's underscore components like this. And then in here, we globally define all these components. So there's the idea that, you know, different content types can use the same components, or potentially you could have nested components. You could have a component that references another component. And what you do is you put them all at the top level here, and then you define the scope in the individual schemas, either for that content type or for that component. If that doesn't make sense, let me just kind of demonstrate a little bit of how that looks. So in our components folder, we could name specific components. And let's just choose some names that we already have. So for instance, I want to look back in my pages. We were looking at the about page. Let's just open that up so we can see what this looks like. We've already structured this to be a component-based architecture. So you can see um, that we have this array, this top-level components array. And inside that, we have different components. So this is one component here, uh, intro text. Here's another one called stats. Here's another one called staff. So these are all individual components. Now, um, you don't have to call this key components. That is just an option. This could be called anything you want. The, the real thing that we're doing here is in our template, we're looking for this key and then we're switching on this and we're loading different layouts based on that. So let me just show that real quick. Um, so if you came to your 
layouts, content, and pages.svelte, you'd see here we're getting that top level key. We call it components in this case. It could be called anything. And then we're saying, if we have components, let's loop over each one of those. And then let's use our magic prop that Plenty provides us all layouts to basically load the layout for that individual component. And then we use the component signature. So we say, you know, it's a folder structure. So this was in layouts forward slash components forward slash the name of the component dot svelte. You just change those to underscores, the, the forward slashes and the dots. So you just load that specific component and then you can pass in some fields and, and stuff if you want. Um, and then that just basically looks in this components uh, folder and loads the correct component. Now you can st structure this however you want. You don't have to call this folder here components. You don't have to call this prop components. You can name it whatever you want. Um, the key here is that this content driven folder components is specially named. Um, and then you basically could call any of these specific components. Let me just show a little bit more how that looks. So let's go back to the about page. Um, let's create our first component. So let's just make this intro component, right? So this intro component here, um, we're full service creative agency corresponds to this component over here. We're a full ser service um, agency and it's this, this section here, right? So we can create this as a component. So I'm going to copy this and I'm calling this intro text here. So let's keep with that naming convention. We can call it whatever we want though. Um, I'm going to go to into components and I'm going to create a new folder called intro text. So intro underscore text. Now this folder name is the name of the component that's used. So that folder name does matter. You could call it whatever you want, but this actually is where the name is coming from. So when you scope what components you want to be able to add to a page, you do it with um, this type of um, naming convention. So inside the component, you could have two files. So the required file here is a new file called defaults.json. This is very similar to the content type. So um, you need a defaults.json because the whole idea of these content different components is that you can add new components to the page. So by default, you can remove components from a page, but you want to be able to add new ones. And you can see here that that just broke our build. Um, that's because this is not valid JSON in here and it's trying to gather it. Don't worry, you can just grab this and let's paste our, our JSON in here and let's move this up. And the reason I'm grabbing this out of the other file because we know this JSON works with its corresponding template. So we know, for instance, an intro text uh, content has two fields, intro and text. And we know if we look over here in our components and we have an intro text uh, Svelte file, that it looks for intro and text again. So it, you know, we know this because we set this up specifically. So you want to do this on your end as well. Um, coming back here, so we can look back in our defaults. Um, this should be fine now. You know, we could add different text in here if we wanted. We can just leave that for now. Let's um, let's run our web server again. Now that we have valid JSON in that file, it should be okay. And so once that's done building, and whenever I run my video software, it takes a long time to build the site. Um, okay. So if I come back over, well, actually there's nothing to do yet, right? So we create this component, but it's not being used anywhere yet. So what we have to do is on our pages. If we go to our schema, we can define the schema now. So we have, we know in our, um, in our pages, for instance, that everything starts with the top level components, right? So the, all these pages are going to be the same way because this is a component based architecture. We make every page start with components and that's how we're doing this to basically make it dynamic. So in our schema, we can define that component field as a component field. So um, let me let me just show again. So um, by default, these pages, they will look like components, right? They have these kind of reorderable components, which is cool. Um, the problem is there's no way to add these. You can remove them. You know, you can come here and you can remove things. Um, let me reload that. But there's no way to add new ones. So if we define it as a component field in our schema, that gives us the ability to define what components we can add to it. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to target that top level key. So we have a top level key called components. And since we named it that, we have to name it the same way in our schema. But this will essentially be a type. Um, I believe it's singular component. Um, although in the future, we probably want to handle both of those. So type component. And then our options. So basically all the schema API, they all use like this convention of like type and options for the most part. Um, so for our options, we want to say um, which components we want available. Now over here, we only have one component available. So there's intro text. So intro text in this case is one of the ones we want. Uh, but let's also demonstrate adding fake, uh, a fake component, a 
fake comp or a missing comp or something like that. Um, so let me save this and this will take a little bit to build, but this will change our front end experience so we can actually see these components in the editors and have the ability to add new ones of these. So if I come over here and I reload this and open this up, you can see now we have this widget down here, this add new components. And if I hit this, there's two components available in here. There's our intro text component and our fake component. And this list is defined by, you know, the list that we made, the, the schema we made for our content type. So in our pages content type, um, we have this, right? So now we can add new ones. So we could do things like, if I come down here, and it's, it's a little um, uh, jumbled when I, I look at like the small, the squish screen, but that's okay. Um, but I could add a bunch of these new, you can see this this section keeps getting added, right? So now we, we, we can just create new ones of those or we could delete them. So I could come down here and delete one of those like that. Um, we can grab this. We should be able to reorder this and change things around. Um, we could come here and we could change this to you know, something completely different. Um, and we could we could start that too. Um, if we went over here in our defaults, we could have, you know, change this text to be something completely different if we didn't want that default text. But you can come in here, yeah, and you can change all this. Now, one of the things that's um, that we can illustrate here is actually something else I had on my list that I wanted to show. So I'm talking about component salt. Now, um, I'm just using that as a way to essentially um, reorder things on a page. So this kind of gets into like how this whole widget works um, in terms of like the CMS. So we have these these different sections here. Now each one of these has, um, each one of these components has an order in this array. So like this first item is zero, and then one, two, three, four. Um, and uh, when we're actually um, reordering these, like if I grab this and I move it, it we can't keep track of, um, we can't use those numbers as a key because those keys change, right? So this is zero, one, two, three right now, but if I move it up here, it's no longer three. So those things change and it messes up the whole transition between these, like the, the transition animation that we have there. Um, so there's something called a, uh, a keyed each block in Svelte that allows you to determine, you know, which specific item you're, you're using to manipulate and keeping track of where it is and where it's going. Um, so we can't use the order for it. So what we do is we actually use the content um, when we're moving things around like this. So we use th like the fact that the content is different between these different items um, to keep track of that. So one of the challenges we have is, first of all, we don't we don't enforce any um, specific key structure or anything like that. So we don't enforce any specific IDs or anything like that on the back end. So people could have content that looks exactly the same. And we actually did on this page, right? We had this section here where a full service agency, and then we, we can create another one of those that looks exactly the same way. So we created this, we're a full service agency, right? So we have that down here now. So this would normally break your, your site, having something like this, but we actually can still use it and still reorder and it all still works. So how's that working? Well, what we do is if we find a component with the exact same content, we come over here um, and you can see it on the back end, we add a little um, random string to it to basically um, differentiate it so we can keep the order going there. So let me just show what that looks like. So we have intro text and you can see here this Second, so this intro text here is fine because I added something different, it had different content, so that removes the plenty salt. But if you have something that is exactly like something else, it adds plenty salt to the new ones. So for instance, we have this section here, we're a full service agency. This component matches exactly the one that we added here. So essentially what we do at the at the back end is we change um, to add this plenty salt, which allows us to have a key to each block that is unique and we can still keep track of it. Now, if you were to change this so you have uniqueness again, it removes the plenty salt. So let me just show what that looks like. So let's come back here and let's say um, we are a unique. So this now has some slight variation from one of the other ones. So that should allow us to remove the plenty salt that we had loaded previously. And now you can see that this no longer has the salt. So if you're ever seeing salt being saved in your content source, that's because you have components that are exactly the same. That's fine, salt's not gonna hurt you, you, you don't have to actually handle that on your display. It can just hang out in the background, but that's why we do that. It basically to, to, in order to keep the order going um, correctly. And then just to kind of give another little step in, in the background. So what happens <laughs> for our key each box when we do the other animations, like the accordion animations to open and close them, we switch it from the content to the order because the content changes. And if your key to each block was changing as the content, you'd also have problems. So we actually do kind of a creative little switching between those things. It allows us to have a flexible content source, um, but also have these things function in a way that makes sense. It's probably a little deeper than most people are gonna need to know, but that's just an example of it. Now let's take a look here over at a fake component, right? So we have this component that doesn't exist. 
So you can see as I try to click this, you get a little X animation here uh, because it doesn't exist yet. So it shouldn't break your site if you have it. It just shouldn't do anything for you because it doesn't exist. So this one adds more components because that works. You get the little check mark. This one doesn't exist yet. But you could create this. You could create a fake component if you wanted to. You could come up here and you just create another folder in here. Um, instead of intro text, you'd create, you create, you know, a fake component and you'd add a default.json to that as well. So that's how something like that would work. Let's show off um, a couple other things here. So let's take a look at, you know, we have our, our intro text component. And right now this is just like a plain text field. We could change this to something like a UUID field um, because that's one of our new field types. So let me demonstrate schemas. Um, so I'm going to create a new file in here. It is going to be the schema.json file. And so this schema is for this component specifically. Um, you can do top level schemas. They, they basically, so, okay. Schemas always target your top level item. So for instance, um, any fields you have in your component. So this specific component has two top level fields, right? It has intro and text. Now, if there was a nested component within this, in order to target the fields within the nested components, you would have another component at this level. Um, in your um, schema here, you would say that you're using a component field, and then you would define the, um, the, the structure for the fields in the component itself. I feel like I'm doing not the, the greatest job of explaining this in a clear way. It's actually a really simple concept to implement and to deal with. Um, but I think it's hard to, to talk about without demonstrating it. Anyways, let me just demonstrate this first thing and then maybe we can go and talk about those deeper levels. But essentially, your scheme is defined at the level of the component that you're at or the content that you're at. Um, okay, so uh, so we're over here. We have these two fields. We have intro and text. Let's just target one of these in our schema file. So we're going to let's target intro. Um, and um, let's make this a type um, I've been calling it UUID, but it's the type is called ID. Um, and I don't believe we need any options. So I think we can just do this. And now that, you know, I broke this because um, I didn't have valid JSON in here, but now we have that back up. I can start the server again. Um, and this should give us an ID type. Now, I'm not sure how this is going to work because um, our defaults had some existing content in here. So I might want to blank that out, but let's just see how this works. So what should happen here is when we add new components, um, it should automatically generate an ID um, for us, and then it should be disabled so we can't edit it. So let's reload this. Let's take a look at what happens here. Um, let's see if I screwed this up. Uh, okay, let's add a new component, intro text. Mm, that, so intro, intro ID, I think it's called ID, but there's a chance... I didn't do that right. Let me just, sorry, let me just try this real quick. Let me change this to something else. Make sure this is working. Checkbox, um, options, options, and we'll say just one, two. Um, we save that. Uh, let's see if we can get this to the schema to work on this component at all. And then um, if we can get that working, then we can uh, adjust the ID field, see if we can get that going. So let me save this, or sorry, reload this, come here. Okay, ah, okay, fields intro. I see what's happening here. Fields.intro, that's what we're doing wrong. So again, so it's all top level, but you can, in a nested object, that's okay, that's, that, that's top level. Only uh, components are something that's not top level. So let's see fields.intro and let's come back here give this a reload and okay so now we have one and two right so obviously it's going to break our display because it's not <laughs> it's not set to handle that but you can see that we have checkboxes here okay let's come back here and let's change this back to id uh, if i can target this id okay and we don't need the options and we want to get rid of that okay so type id and we should be able to target that as well so give it a second to rebuild and then i can reload this and let's take a look at the id field 
Okay, so right now it's just because there's content in here, it just it does not try to get rid of existing content. It only if it's empty will it try to generate it. But you can see this is disabled here. So um and we have this for our, our our kind of like intro right now as well. So if I come here and I add this, we're gonna get the same thing here again. Um but yeah, let's let's take a look at what would happen if this field was blank. So let's go back to our defaults, right? Um in here, let's get rid of this and let's say that our defaults are blank. So now on new components, it should try to generate an ID for us. And it's gonna take, you know, 10 seconds or so to run. But let me start reloading over here. And let's take a look. So this is gonna be the same, but if we come here and add new ones, we should get these IDs. Yeah, so you can see that these automatically generated IDs are here. So this is really helpful for the next concept. So there's a new concept um, that we're calling shadow content. And what that's allowing us to do is to have uh, content that that could maybe live in a different system that that you can edit in your editor like normal but would not save on the front end so um, for instance you might have a site that has private data and you'd pull in a project like a super base or a firebase um, or there's another project that we've been using called pocket base um, which is gaining in popularity so this is essentially uh, a very simple backend. Um, it's a it's a GoLang binary um, that has a SQLite backend, um, and it handles user authentication and um, like a, basically a database of information that they store in collections. And so essentially, you might want to store private information in your database in order to do some kind of um, access control. So making sure people are logged in or have certain levels of permission to get to certain data or to be able to edit or save certain data. Um, so that is. Um, something that you don't want to put into your content object because this this JSON is essentially um, public because it lives on your front end of your website. It all gets sent to the browser. So even if you weren't displaying it, like for instance, you could choose not to display like this field, but it would be accessible to somebody who wants to look through your code. So sometimes you might want to save something in a way um, that's that's more private. So um, if you pull in a, a backend database application, you might want to be able to tie your front end to your back end through an ID field. So something like this ID field can be very, uh, useful because you can save that ID to the back end. Um, and then that's a way you can kind of create a link between those two different things. Um, anyways, I know it's a little crazy, but so a way that you can create um, private content is you use this, this concept of shadow content. Um, I think the easiest way to just demonstrate this, I don't think I'm going to go too crazy into the template side of things, but what you would do is um, you come here and uh, essentially what you could do is um, in your schema, you could target the field. So let's make um, text shadow content. So you see right now, if we look at text, it's being saved in here like this. Um, we could essentially make text shadow content. So we could do something like target the fields dot text. And in here we could just say um, type is text, which is fine. That's, that's what it looks like. It's currently getting the type text automatically through the discoverable CMS. So the type is text, that's fine. But then we want to say either before or after. So there's two keywords. There's a before keyword and an after keyword. And these both um, point to another field at the same level, right? So for instance, there's only one other field. So there's intro. We could either place this before or after. Let's try before because right now it's automatically after. So just to show that it's working, let's place it before. And that should adjust this over here. So in one of these new things, this text field actually appears before the intro field. And then whenever you do that before or after, essentially what you're doing is you're saying, I want to take this out of the normal flow of my, my content structure. And if you take it out of your normal flow of the content structure, we stop tracking it. And essentially now you're saying, okay, what I want to do is I'm going to be saving this somewhere else. So, so the way to make a shadow content is to do a schema with a before or after key. That's all you have to do. And you can use any of the normal types. You can make it a component. You can make it, you know, a UUID. It could be um, checkboxes, whatever you want. In this case, we're just doing simple text. And we're going to say, um, put it before, before the intro field. Intro. Um, so now you have this before your intro field. If you save that, give it a second, um, the, the couple things should happen. So it should, um, it should change the order of this. So this becomes before intro and then it should take it out of our, our content object over here. Um, and let me just reload that so we can see. Come here, let's, let's add a new component, intro. Okay. Um, okay, I was thinking on this shadow uh, content thing again. So one of the things I'm doing wrong here is um, 
I'm using a field that's actually defined in here. So this is actually already in our content source. You want to do your new custom field. So it'd be like, you know, my field, what, whatever that field is, right? Um, and then you could put it before one of these. If I save this, um, that would typically uh, build that into our output. Now, I don't believe this will work with components. I think it only works with top level fields at the moment. So let me just refresh this and just see. So if I come here, add a new component. Oh, look here. Okay, so it's it still can't get it because it can only do a top level field. Um, let me see if I can pull up an example of that. Um, so let's let's go over here to our terminal. Um, let's create a new site here. I'm going to go to my downloads, and I'm going to plenty new site test. And I'm going to cd into my test site. And before I serve it, I'm going to, let's see, we have our content and we have our pages. And pages has default, but let's create a schema in here as well. Schema.json. So let's uh, touch that file. Actually, let's, let's edit it. NeoVim, content pages. Schema. Okay. So in here, let's um, create some fields. It's actually, this would be helpful to see uh, what our structure cu currently looks like. So let me see. Okay. So we have title, description, and source, right? So we should be able to place a shadow content field before or after any of these. Let's just target description and let's place it before. So over here, we're going to say, um, our new content field is my shadow field. And this is going to be of type text. And it will be before we said description, description, description like that. Okay. So if I save that, uh, if I save it and let's get out of here and let's do a plenty serve. I already have another site running, so let's just pass a non-standard port. Schema. Okay. So I My schema is not right. Let's see here. Aha. Uh -huh. I didn't do a closing bracket. Okay. So let's try this again. Let's serve it. Okay, now let me open this up. So we're in our site. Is our site working for the most part? Okay, let's um, let's log in. We'll go to the admin. We'll click login. So now we're logged into our CMS. Oop, that looks like it's throwing us some errors, potentially. Okay, I figure out what's going on here. So. Um, this this is fine how we have this schema basically being defined, but what we're not doing by default in our default starter is passing our shadow content to our CMS. So if we come up here and we go to our global HTML.spell file, you see here that we're not handling shadow content at all. So first come up and pull your shadow content prop into your, your main wrapper here, and then make sure that you send it to this dynamic component that's going to the CMS here. So we're, we're passing the admin menu you want to come down here and you also want to bind shadow content, shadow content like this. If you do that, okay, so we save that. Let's make sure we go back to our schema. Let's save this again. And then we can see if we're still running our site. Let's just rerun it and come over and take a look at our site over here. Let's refresh this. And now if I come in to edit, okay, you can see here, Test that was coming in. So it's not getting any value because we're not actually putting any value as like a default value in there. Um, but you could load that into that um, essentially. And so, I mean, what you could do, let's take a look here. Um, so this would typically come from your back end, but let's just replicate it here maybe. Um, so let's go to our content pages, um, uh, pages.svelte. Let's open this up. So you see here we have all this information. We could pull. Um, shadow content in here. So shadow, shadow content. 
and if you guys spell it right, and then we know that um, let's just arbitrarily set um, shadow uh, content dot. What do we end up calling this? We called it testo in the end. So testo is our field. Um, let's set testo testo to um, uh, testo default value. And let's do something like that. Um, so we also have to, this is probably going to break our site because we need to pass this to our pages. Um, so again, go back to our HTML. Make sure we're passing shadow content here. Um, let's bind it so we can override it. Bind shadow content to our dynamic component that feeds our, our pages. Um, see that broke because it couldn't find that before. It should be fine now that we're passing it. Mm, actually, is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. Let's come over here. Okay, so testo default value. Um, so you could do a lot of things here. Like, um, for instance, um, you like on save, you can get the on save event. Um, let's see here. Um, so we have our on save events in here as well. So you could do something like back to our pages. Um, uh, let's do shadow content dot on save, I believe it's called. And you can do something like this uh, where, so every time you click your save event in your editor, um, usually that, you know, that saves your JSON on the back here. Um, you can see that testo is not being saved at all. So this testo right under title is not being tracked in our content anymore. Uh, but you could do things on it. So typically you would, um, yeah, you'd hook this into like a, a pocket-based backend or something like that. Um, but we could do here in this case is you could just like, uh, we could just override this with something custom. We could just say, um, whenever we save this, let's just do shadow content dot testo equals uh maybe it's the same thing shadow content dot testo plus new um so that's going to add new to it every time uh and it should keep uh bumping bumping this string longer here but let's let's just give this a shot um come here come here save so new you see how new keeps added getting added here to our shadow content um Nothing's happening, nothing's changing on our back end uh, because the, the JSON is staying the same. So we can have that private. Essentially, you wouldn't, you know, this is a, a bad example. You typically hook this into like a database back end. So either save it to the database back end, retrieve it, on save, on delete. You can do, do things like that with shadow content. Um, so yeah, that's basically how shadow content can be used. Um, I believe this only works at top level fields right now. We, we potentially could extend this to components as well. Although I feel like that might be less useful because components are dynamic in structure. Um, and it might be weird to keep track of content like that in your database backend. Um, but uh, there's something that we could potentially extend in the future if people want it. So if that's something folks want and need in their projects, um, either comment here or uh, put it even better, put an issue in the issue queue for plenty. Um, but yeah, so essentially that's, that's shadow content. Uh, it allows you to have private information, hybrid private information with your public information. So you can have protected sections, even though some of this information might want to be public. So you want the optimization for the public stuff, right? So this gets HTML fallbacks, um, good for SEO, good for performance, that kind of thing. But you also can have some, some private content um, uh, potentially as well. We talked about um, these. Oh, time is another uh, input. Um, that should work uh, uh, similarly to other fields. Um, Naming conflicts when adding new content. So um, if you tried to add, you know, for instance, like a new content with a page that already exists, let's try like about.json, I think already exists. You can see that you get a warning here that the file with the content already exists. So instead of just going to the editing interface, you can either like come here and change it and then write it again, or you could go and edit that existing content, which we're, I guess that was a bad example because we we're already on that page, right? So for instance, if we were on this page and we try to do something like that, right? Grab a page about, um, says it already exists, it'll take us right there. It'll take us to the existing page. Um, so that's handled now. Um, a lot of bug fixes, notably loading schemas appropriately. So 
um, when you're first coming and adding new pages, um, the schema should be loaded appropriately for those um, those content types. Shadow content we just talked about. Uh, sorry, the example wasn't very good. Um, maybe I could show another example uh, on, on a different test site that might be helpful. Um, we rename blueprints the defaults. We talked about that. We talked about the component defaults. Talked about the component schema, the component salt for keeping track of the information. And then there's also a CLI command here um, now uh, that Steve had created uh, to basically um, create new components. So for instance, we have um, these, you know, we have intro component in here right now, but we could, you know, if we want scaffolding created for another component, we could do something like plenty new component, component um, my comp, whatever, whatever you want to be. In this case, I'm just going to make the name my comp. Um, oh, I actually have to pull, I haven't pulled the newer version of plenty to do that. That's why that, okay. This, another example, this command will be available. Essentially what that will do is that creates scaffolding, um, in here. So it'll create a new folder called my component and it'll put a underscore defaults.json and an underscore schema.json file in there. I didn't pull the newest version of plenty, so I don't have it on my local, um, my local computer yet. So that's why that's happening. Um, okay. So yeah, I think that's, that's basically it for this, um, this uh, devlog, but um, you know, stay tuned to the to the channel. We'll we'll keep trying to update things as they come out. Um, I'll do a little better job of setting up some of the examples. I think uh, sometimes it's helpful to actually visualize what's happening rather than just hear me talk about it. So I'll try to do a better job about that in the future. All right, see ya.